Wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, gain understanding. You have money. Maybe it's a lot, maybe it's a little, but either way, you are the manager of that money. You decide where it goes, how much is saved, how much is spent, how much is given away. You are the manager of that money. Are you being wise with the money you manage? This is the last week of a four-part series we're doing on biblical financial principles. And those principles that we've been studying are, number one, to beware of the money we love. Two, to be generous with the money we have. Three, to be prosperous with the money we make. And now four, to be wise with the money we manage. Let's see what the Bible, the word of God to some, and, and wise ancient literature others. Let's see what it has to say about how you manage your money. So be wise with the money you manage, right? No one sets out to be foolish with money. No one intends to squander it, and yet many people do. And if you're reading this or listening to this, then you have money of some kind. How do we be wise with that money we manage? But first, let's get something straight, right? We are money managers, not owners. We must be wise with the money we manage. And that's not just alliteration, that's biblical truth. And if you don't believe in God, stick with me for a minute here. We'll get right back to being wise with it. But but the Bible is clear on this, right? God owns it all. This concept is repeated clearly throughout the Bible, but most clearly in Psalm 50, where it says, the world is mine and all that is in it. God owns everything and has entrusted some of it to each of us to manage. We believe we own our money and our possessions, but we only manage them. We're like a a child who calls everything mine. And if if we loosely claim ownership, then God smiles and says, yes, you know, your room, your toys, right? But when we belligerently insist, no, my house, my room, my toys, he steps in like a parent and gently corrects us. And he says, no, this is my stuff. I'm just letting you use it and letting you manage it. It's all his, and he's letting us use it. Our money is no more ours than our child's toy is theirs. When we view ourselves as owners, we are free to do whatever we want with our money, even even squander it, right? Even, even waste it. But when it's not our money, it's someone else's, it gives us more responsibility to do it well. When we view ourselves as managers, it creates this responsibility. We can no longer waste it. I feel the weight of this responsibility, right, in managing money for someone else. And, and when, when, when one manages the life savings of dozens of households, one cannot afford mistakes or inintention. My job as a money manager is to maximize this money, not to waste it. And if we all viewed ourselves as managers of someone else's money, then our choices would be wiser. She just tells a parable uh, or a story around this principle and while the parable actually is just using money as an example to illustrate something else, and it's not actually about money, its implications for the wise management of money are instructive. And so if you're familiar at all with, with the Bible, if you grew up in a Christian home, or if you're an active Christian yourself, you, you may recognize this story. It's called the parable of the talents, and you can find it in Matthew 25. And I'm going to paraphrase it, but you can always find the full uh, scripture at the bottom of the blog. So this business owner, right? Now, I'm going to paraphrase it just to modernize it a little bit because some of the, con- the, the initial context of first century uh, Israel doesn't quite translate without some deeper knowledge. I'm just going to paraphrase it, but again, you can always read the, the full scripture. So this business owner, he's going on a long trip, right? And he calls three of his managers to him to give him instruction. To one, he gives $50,000. To another, he gives $20,000. And to the last one, he gives $10,000, each according to their ability. And he instructs him to go out and do something wise with that money and, and while he's away. And, and then he goes out and leaves. And at once, two of them, the first two, go out and they start conducting business. And the first manager invests his $50,000 and through wise maneuvering, he doubles it. Right? And then the second also goes out and takes his $20,000 and through shrewd handling, he also manages to double that money. But the third manager, he buries his $10,000 under his mattress. And when the business owner returns, he calls his manager back uh, to give a report. And, and, you know, how do they do with his money that he let them use while he was away? And the first manager reports, sir, you gave me $50,000. I invested and I've doubled it. Here's $100,000 back. The owner is elated, right? He says, well done, good and faithful manager. You have been faithful with little. You will be, you know, I will set you over much. And, th- and that owner awards the manager with a huge 
promotion, gives him a lot more responsibility and a lot more compensation to go with that. The city manager steps forward and reports, sir, you gave me $20,000 and I invested that and I doubled it. Here's $40,000. And again, the owner is delighted. Well done, good and faithful manager. You've been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. And again, the owner awards the second manager with a huge promotion. And then all attention shifts to the third manager, right? Who, rather than stepping forward, is looking down at his feet. And he mumbles, look, you didn't really give me much, only $10,000. And there wasn't really much I can do with only $10,000. And, and I was afraid, and I didn't want to lose it, so I, so I kept it safe. Now, so here's your $10,000 back. And the owner is furious. You wicked and lazy manager, he says. You did nothing with it. I entrusted you with this money to manage, and you buried it. If you can't be trusted with a little, why should I trust you with much? And that third manager was promptly fired and cast out onto the street. And there's a few principles we can glean from this story. And the first is that we all have different abilities. Right? In the parable, Jesus explicitly says that the owner gave different amounts to each according to his ability. Right? We all have different abilities for handling wealth. Some have a greater ability to handle wealth than others and thus will receive more responsibility for handling greater amounts. Is that ability fixed? Are we all born with this innate and immutable capacity for wealth? Well, the parable doesn't say, right? It doesn't go that deep. It says that in that story, right, they each had a different ability in the moment that they were assigned. So wherever they were in life, they had, they had different abilities and it makes no mention of that ability growing or, or not. But personally, I believe that it can change, right? We can increase our ability to handle wealth by growing in wisdom, which we'll talk about more later. <clears throat> but the second thing we can glean from this parable, right, is that net worth does not equal human worth. We talk about that a lot here on the podcast because there's this, this temptation we have in general in America to view people who have more money or who earn more money as more important or worth more than those who make or have less. And that's not what's happening at all here, right? The first manager made $50,000 for the owner and the second manager only made $20,000, right? So therefore, the owner must have been happier with the first owner who made him more money, right? No, not at all. The response of the owner to the first two managers is exactly the same. Well done, good and faithful manager. You have been entrusted, you've been faithful with little, therefore I will set you over much. He is equally pleased with both, even though one had a higher numerical result. Why is that? Right? It's obvious to us if, if we've read it, right? But that most most uh, both managers did the most with what they had been given. Right? The first had more and thus had a greater responsibility to produce more. They had $50,000 and therefore they had a responsibility to make more than the other one who only had $20,000 to start with. The work, second worker had less but worked just as hard. And so often we only look at the numerator without looking at the denominator, right? We, you know, someone gives $6,000 and it doesn't make any news, right? But then the same way we can read about a philanthropist, a philanthropist who donates a million dollars and we might think, my, aren't they generous? And we don't always see the second half, right? The, new, the denominator says that their income was $300 million that year. And so they gave less than a half a percent of their income and yet we thought they were generous. Meanwhile, the $60,000 was 10% of that household's $60,000 income. So who was more generous, right? The person that makes $300 million and gives away a million or the household that makes $60,000 and gives away 6,000. And so it doesn't matter what you've been given. And I, it doesn't matter even much really what your ability to handle wealth is. What matters is what you do with that which is given to you. What matters is what you do with that which has been given to you. How are you managing your money? How are you managing your time and talents? And are you doing the best with what you have been entrusted with? And lastly, breaking even isn't enough. Breaking even isn't enough. The first two managers were praised for doubling what they had been given, right? They were given something and they went out, they worked, they were wise, they were shrewd, and they doubled it and they both managed it well the third manager was fired and cast out. Because he lost the money, right? No, because he kept it safe. He didn't lose a penny, he broke even, and that's not enough. The third manager was afraid of losing the money. He didn't think he could do much with it anyways, and, and since it wasn't going to be, uh, it wasn't much to begin with, he, he buried it, right? He lost by not winning. 
and, and how many of us do the same thing, right? We're, we're afraid of losing our money, so we bury it. And we, we bury it in CDs and bonds and other guaranteed products. And instead of doubling it and doubling our impact in the world, we bury it. Don't bury what you've been given. Don't squander it. Manage it well and hear well done. Be wise with the money you manage. We all have different abilities to manage wealth. There, we all have, we're all responsible for managing what we've been given to the best of our ability. And we cannot manage what we've been given, then why should we be given any more? And too often we fall into this trap of, oh, as soon as I make more money, then I'll pay off this debt. Or at my next raise, then I'll start saving more. Or, or hey, when I get to X amount in my accounts, then I'll invest. And we get it backwards. We don't start being wise with our money after we have more. We'll have more money after we start being wise with what we have. You've been faithful with little, therefore I will set you over much. In the parable, the first two are wise with the money and, and they manage and they are rewarded with even more. The second wasn't less wise because he had less, nor was the first wiser because he was richer. They were both wise with the money they managed. Be wise with the money you manage. So how do we become wise with this money, right? Well, Proverbs state, right? The one who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. Who are you spending time with? Are you spending time with, with fools who then are, then you suffer harm? Or all the people that you spend time with, everyone you hang out with, everyone you associate with, do they all spend everything they make or more than they make? constantly because if so you will likely be like them and will suffer harm or you spend time with wise people do you walk with wise people to gain that wisdom another says without counsel plans fail but with many advisors they succeed if you want to grow in wisdom so you can manage your well your your money well then walk with wise people get advice from wise counsel no one can learn to be wise in this complicated financial world by meditating on a rock in a desert, right? It would be best if you learned it from others. The Bible doesn't give us specific advice on wise money ma management because the context of money changes, right? The way that we must manage money now in 21st century, 22nd century, where are we now, right? We, 21st century, we, it's different than what it was back in the first century uh, when this was, when this story was written. But it doesn't, you know, so it doesn't give us the specifics on it, but I believe that managing our money, that being wise with our money now means A, being you know, intentional with our cash flow and, and to save a portion of everything that we earn and, and, and to give some away and to monitor our spending rate if we're already retired. To have an investing plan to make the most of what's entrusted with us, right? Like, again, breaking even doesn't cut it. We must grow, we must invest, we must do more with what we've been entrusted with. And that starts with having a plan that we follow. Having a tax plan, right, to give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God's what is God's. Translation, right, to, we have to pay our taxes, but let's not pay more than we legally have to so that we have more to give and more to have an impact with. And lastly, to take care of yourself and to leave a legacy for others. For a good person leaves an inheritance to his children's children, as it says in the Proverbs. Translation, right, have an estate plan. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself and then make sure that you are dictating where that goes when you go. If you don't know how to do these things, right, then get wise counsel to help you. Plan succeed with many advisors, meaning that when you have advisors on all the various aspects of a plan, you'll have comprehensive wisdom. So get advice in all these areas of money management or from one person that knows all of these areas. Through wise counsel and walking with wise people, you can beware of the money you love, be generous with the money you have, be prosperous with the money you make, and be wise with the money you manage. That wraps up this little short series we're doing on some biblical financial principles. It's by no means exhaustive. The Bible has lots to say about money and lots of wisdom we can glean. But I want to just give you a few insights into how uh, the Bible thinks about it in, in ways that maybe we haven't thought about before. We'll get back next week to some more modern day, less ancient wisdom, right? Less biblical wisdom and more just modern day tactics and, and things that we can think on and, and stir on to, to grow our knowledge, to build our belief, and to inspire us. To act. So we'll be back next week with even more content. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. Cheers. 
I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did enjoy that, you would love being a part of our free membership community. It's called Retire Membership, and you can sign up today completely for free. When you do that, you get a host of bonus and exclusive content that we don't give out anywhere else. For example, you can buy my book, 3D Retirement Income, on Amazon, but if you become a retirement member, we will send you one for free and or give you the audiobook and ebook just for signing up. You also get additional bonus content, exclusive content, including client corner insights from some of the best minds in behavioral investing, workbooks to go along with our workshops to help you get the most out of it, and more ongoing bonus and exclusive content. Some of this you can't get anywhere else, and so we would love for you to join our community. You can join now at retiremembership.com. Otherwise, there's a link in the description of this video where you can sign up. All we want to do is continue to give you the best information out there so that you can retire successfully and stay successfully retired. You can go in there, do that on our website. There's also a a longer form podcast. uh, I think it's episode 80 that will help explain what it is and what we're trying to do with retirement membership. But join now for free. Get this and much more exclusive content by joining us today. We look forward to seeing you there and thanks for watching. Cheers.